Um, and welcome to the webinar, The Water Act, A Solution for Our Country's Growing Water Crisis. My name is Rihanna Eckel, and I am a senior organizer on the national organizing team with Food and Water Watch. I am so glad to be here with you all tonight, and we have a wonderful lineup of speakers with us. Um, this evening, we will hear from Food and Water Action's Executive Director and Public Water for All Campaign Director. We'll cover the root cause of our water crisis and how the Water Act would help ensure that everyone has access to safe, affordable, clean public water. And we will cover the upcoming political opportunities to organize for water justice and talk about how you can get involved. We have a great video from one of our lead bill sponsors to share, so stick around. And at the end, we will have time to answer questions from Food and Water Watch's experts. Uh, but before we get started, just a quick orientation if you are joining us on Zoom. I know at this point in the pandemic, many of us are Zoom experts, but just in case, um, this would be a good time to mention that if you aren't joining us on screen share by clicking the link that you received in the email, we highly recommend doing that. Um, we're here on video and we will be sharing slides throughout the webinar. And so if you join us um, that way, you'll be able to see all of that. And we have some links that we'll be sharing during the presentation tonight. So it was really wonderful to hear from all of you and, and get your introductions, but we're gonna turn off the chat function for the remainder of the call, just so that the links we're sharing don't get lost. However, if you have a question at any point in the presentation, we definitely wanna hear it. So you can click the Q&A box um, at the bottom of the Zoom screen, and we will get to as many of those as we can throughout and at the end of the webinar. Um, and we have some questions that were submitted beforehand, so we will try to answer those too. Um, and we are also on Food and Water Action's Facebook Live, so you can find us there as well. And hello to everyone who's joining us there. Um, all right, well, that is all of the Zoom updates, so let's jump into why we're here tonight. Um, we are here because we are facing a water crisis in our country and we need to solve it. I'm sure that so many of you have seen examples of our water crisis in the news lately. Um, last month, a climate-induced superstorm that froze and burst thousands of water mains across the Gulf South left many in Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi without water for days, weeks, or even until today, over a month later. And throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, millions of people have faced water shutoffs, for bills they couldn't afford to pay due to the pandemic and economic recession, despite the fact that washing your hands is still a top public health recommendation to stop the spread of COVID. And communities across the country have discovered harmful pollutants as in any given year, between seven and 8% of community water utilities report at least one health-based violation of federal standards. And we don't even have federal standards for some of the most persistent pollutants. And private companies and exploitative industries like fracking and factory farming make all of these challenges worse. Water is a human right at the end of the day, and it is our most basic necessity. Without water, you can't cook, you can't bathe, you can't clean, you can't wash your clothes, you can't wash your hands. And it is simply unacceptable that people across our country in 2021 are struggling to access clean, safe, affordable public water. Um, now more than ever, it is the time to take action and work together to ensure that the federal government treats water like the human right that it is. And we have an opportunity coming up to ensure that the federal government takes action in the next few months. But before we talk about how we're gonna win Water for All, it is my pleasure to introduce Food and Water Watch and Food and Water Action's founder and executive director, Winona Howder. Winona has three decades of experience campaigning and writing on food, water, energy, and environmental issues. She has trained and mentored hundreds of organizers and activists across the country and worked at the national, state, and local levels to develop policy positions and legislative field strategies to secure real wins for communities and the environment. Thanks so much, Winona. I am so proud to be here today kicking off our webinar on the Water Act. 16 years ago, when we founded Food and Water Watch, one of our top goals was to revitalize our public water systems 
and to make sure that everyone in our nation has access to safe and affordable tap water. At that time, several global water companies were targeting US water systems for privatization. They saw taking over public water as a big opportunity for profiting. Research shows that private water in the US costs on average about 60% more than publicly provided water. Some private water companies also saw privatization as a way to control water resources. I'm happy to report that since our founding, we've played a big role in halting the private water industry's grandiose plans, and we've helped stop dozens of privatizations. Today, almost nine out of 10 consumers get their water from public water companies. But the other long-term battle that we've been working on to support public water is the funding of water infrastructure. Over the past 40 years, many public water systems have been starved of the cash they need to fulfill their mission. Federal funding has declined 82% since its peak in 1977, when it provided more than $76 per person in the US. Today, that investment is shamefully below $14. The lack of funding is creating a moral crisis of epic proportions. Water and sewage plants are outdated and crumbling, and the 1.2 million miles of water pipes in the nation are in trouble. In some states, water lines are over a century old and aren't capable of delivering safe water. In many other locations, systems were built in the years following World War II, and they have old lead and cast iron pipes that need to be replaced. There is also a crisis of contamination from toxic chemicals and a desperate need of funding to ameliorate the problems because of health concerns. Unfortunately, not only have the necessary dollars been cut over time, but the funding of water infrastructure has been politicized. Every year there is a battle over the dwindling dollars in the state revolving funds. At Food and Water Watch, we have long advocated for a dedicated source of funding for water infrastructure so that our precious water systems will not be subject to the fickle whims of Congress during the annual appropriations process. Over time, we need a trillion dollars. The Clean Water Trust Fund would provide a dedicated source of funding every year. $35 billion would begin to solve the problem. And at the same time, the repairs would create nearly a million jobs fixing pipes and infrastructure. This is not a radical idea. Trust funds have been created for other types of infrastructure, including the Highway Trust Fund, the Harbor Maintenance Trust Fund, and others. We were able to get the Water Act introduced five years ago after the terrible Flint disaster. We worked with the late Michigan Congressman, John Conyers, to get the Water Act introduced in the House. That year, we were able to get only 16 additional sponsors. Since that time, we've made enormous progress building support for the Water Act and a trust fund. This year, 500 organizations joined with us in calling for this federal legislation. In February, Representative Brenda Lawrence and Ro Khanna reintroduced the legislation with 75 co-sponsors in the House, 
and Senator Sanders introduced the bill in the Senate with three other co-sponsors. We're thrilled to continue building the political power to pass this legislation. And I'm confident that in the not too far future, this will be possible. If we as a nation truly believe in equity and justice, we must start by providing water for all. Wonderful, thank you so much, Winona. Um, if Winona's words brought up any questions for you, uh, you can uh, drop or you can click the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen and we will get to as many as of those as we can at the end of the webinar. I've seen some really great questions coming in already. Um, in a moment, we will hear more from Mary Grant, our Public Water for All campaign director, about our solution to the water crisis, the recently reintroduced Water Act, as Winona just mentioned. Um, but before we hear from Mary, I want to share two ways you can get involved and support this work. First, you can support this campaign with a monthly donation to Food and Water Action. We know that this is still a difficult time for many families, but if you are able, a small monthly donation is one of the best ways to support this urgent work to demand our elected officials guarantee safe, clean, affordable public water for everyone. Um, in honor of, of World Water Day, which was on Monday of this week, uh, Food and Water Action has a small group of supporters who are matching all new monthly donations from this call through the end of the year. So your monthly support along with the generosity of all of our action partners allows us to co-author bills like the Water Act and build the political power we need to fight for water justice. Um, so the link to sign up to donate monthly is in the chat and you can click that. Um, you can also support this crucial campaign by making phone calls from home to other Food and Water Action supporters and voters in key congressional districts and states and ask them to call their representative to support the Water Act. All you need to make calls is a computer or a tablet and your phone. Um, so if you are interested in volunteering from home, please fill out the second form that we are just going to send in the chat now. So Cassandra Worthington has shared those um, if you are looking in the chat both to donate monthly and to volunteer. Um, and I will share more about what volunteering looks like and who you'd be calling and supporting this campaign later in the call. Um, but now I wanna turn it over to Mary Grant. Mary is the Public Water for All campaign director with Food and Water Watch and Food and Water Action. And she oversees our campaigns to support universal access to safe water in the United States by promoting responsible and affordable public provisions of water and sewer service. And I am always amazed um, by her knowledge of our water systems. So it is my pleasure to introduce Mary Grant. Thank you, Brianna. I am now gonna give you an overview of the Water Act. That's HR 1352 S916. I saw that someone, Ralph had a question in the chat about the number. So they're right there on the screen for you. Um, it's in Congress right now. The Water Affordability, Transparency, Equity, and Reliability Act is the most comprehensive solution for our nation's water problems. It would create a trust fund, that's the heart of the legislation, backed by a progressive revenue stream to fully fund our nation's water infrastructure. It would provide $35 billion each and every year for our water. That's what EPA says we need to spend so that our water and wastewater systems can comply with existing federal standards. This would restore the federal government's commitment to safe water. The funding would come from just a tiny little rollback of the Trump administration's tax cuts on corporate profits, just a 3.5 percentage point increase in the tax on corporate profits would fully fund our nation's water infrastructure. And we know the cost of the failure to act. We see it every day as water mains break, flooding roads and homes, as sewage spills contaminate our precious waterways. Every single year, there are more than 250,000 water main breaks, wasting more than 2 trillion gallons of water each year. There are tens of thousands of sewer overflows, spilling billions upon billions of gallons of raw sewage. In recent months, there have been sewage spills from coast to coast. 
closing shorelines in California and creating a lazy river of toilet paper and poop in Florida. There are climate catastrophes that have taken water systems completely offline and endangered people's lives. A third of Texas was under boil orders or outages during last month's winter blast. And climate chaos has collided with years of federal disinvestment in the majority black city of Jackson, Mississippi, leaving residents without water for more than a month. The Water Act will also fund a range of projects such as to address drinking water contamination from per and polyfluoral alkyl substances. These are PFAS, the forever chemicals. They're lab made toxics that were used in Teflon and firefighting foams and are being found in the water across the country. The Water Act would provide support to update treatment systems or find alternative water supplies when community water systems have PFAS contamination. It provides funding to rural households to test and install filtration systems on household drinking water wells, or to connect to public water supplies if home treatment fails. The Water Act would also address the lead in water crisis, helping remove all lead service lines. It would also dramatically increase the grant program to remove lead and other toxics from the water in public schools, increasing funding from a mere $5 million a year. That's right now we're only spending $5 million a year to remove lead from school water. And it will increase that to more than a billion dollars a year. It will provide grants to replace and repair all infrastructure necessary to ensure that our kids have safe, lead-free drinking water at school. And I want to emphasize how important this is. No child should be exposed to lead, especially not at school. The science is really clear. No amount of lead is safe, particularly for our youngest children. Lead is a dangerous neurotoxin. The Water Act also prioritizes half of the funding as grants to help disadvantaged communities improve their water and sewer systems. Overall, by restoring federal support to water infrastructure, we will reduce the burden on our cities and our towns. In turn, cities and towns will not need to continue to hike rates to pay for improvements. By avoiding these rate hikes, the Water Act will help mitigate our nation's deepening water affordability crisis, shifting the burden off of local households. The Water Act also requires the EPA to produce guidance on water affordability programs and to coordinate a study about water affordability, discrimination, and civil rights violations, as well as public participation in water regionalization efforts, and to collect data about water shutoffs. The Water Act is so critical right now in this moment that we're in. The pandemic has exposed and exacerbated our country's existing water affordability crisis. Before the pandemic, as many as one in three households faced unaffordable water bills. In a typical year, our research found 2016, an estimated 15 million people experienced a water shutoff. That's the combined populations of New York City, Los Angeles, and Chicago. The Water Act also dedicates 3% of drinking water dollars for grants to indigenous communities. Currently, funding is capped at 2%. Overall, the Water Act will expand funding to indigenous water systems from about $20 million a year to nearly half a billion dollars a year. And it creates a new grant program for rural households to help install and improve household septic tanks. And it provides dedicated funding for rural households with household well contamination. And it dramatically expands support for technical assistance to help rural and small municipalities and indigenous governments improve their water and sewer systems. The Water Act ensures that all funding will go to the public benefit by cutting off subsidies to water privatizers. Private water companies will no longer receive federally subsidized water loans. It will amend the drinking water federal funding eligibility to restrict the money to only publicly owned and operated water systems and small locally owned systems. It also allows communities to use funds to buy their water systems from these private operators and owners and then exit water privatization contracts. And lastly, the Water Act is a job spill. It's a good way to stimulate our economy and get people back to work after vaccines are widely available. It will create up to nearly 1 million good jobs right here in communities across the country, from trucking to plumbers to pipe fitters and more. We need to pass the Water Act as part of the infrastructure stimulus package that's coming up 
and we have a real shot at winning big changes that will improve people's lives. We are in a political moment where real water improvements are possible. The Biden administration wants the infrastructure stimulus to be a $3 trillion package. Key leaders of committees in the House and the Senate are beginning to recognize that water is critical infrastructure and already are proposing higher levels of funding for a water than they have in years in the past. But with your help, we can push these plans to be bigger and bolder and to really meet our water challenges with the urgency that they demand. Now is the moment, and that's why your help today is so important. Thank you. Amazing, thank you so much, Mary. Um, now to further inspire you to advocate for the Water Act, we have a quick video from one of our lead sponsors, Representative Brenda Lawrence. Um, she shared this video on Monday, which was World Water Day, and apologies for the ambulance noise in the background, but um, now we'll hear this video from Representative Lawrence. Yeah. Hello everyone, I'm Congresswoman Brenda Lawrence and I represent Michigan's 14th Congressional District. I am so proud to lead the effort in introducing the Water Act in the U.S. House of Representatives. We have a water crisis in the United States and it affects every corner of our country. As a representative from Michigan, I know all too well the struggles that family ha families have assessing clean and safe water. We need to invest and strengthen our nation's water infrastructure and we need to do it now. And my bill will do exactly that. It will dedicate $35 billion to repair drinking water and sewer systems, help stop sewage overflows, find infrastructure improvements, and create nearly 1 million jobs. We must work together to get this done and get it over the finish line. Access to clean, and safe water is a basic human right. Amazing. Um, Representative or Congresswoman Lawrence is truly incredible. Um, I had the opportunity to see her do her thing on a um, on a briefing with other legislative staff earlier this week, trying to convince folks to get on board with the Water Act. And it is so wonderful um, to hear from her and hear her inspiring words. Um, we are going to get to the question and answer session in just a second. But right now I'd like to share a little bit of more details and ask you again to get involved. Uh, now that the COVID relief bill has passed, the Biden administration is working on a huge infrastructure spending bill, which Mary mentioned. Um, and in the past, when you've thought of infrastructure, you may think of roads and bridges, uh, but water funding will be a big part of this. Um, and the language for the infrastructure bill has not been finalized yet, um, but the latest news says it should be soon. And once it's introduced, just like the COVID relief bills, it will have to move and be passed through the House and the Senate. So we have a really uh, incredible window right now to organize and mobilize to ensure that real water justice solutions are included in this infrastructure package so that everyone can have access to clean, safe, affordable public water. Um, so we are kicking off this campaign to include the Water Act um, in the infrastructure package with a national call-in day tomorrow to urge both our senators and representatives to support the Water Act and include it in the infrastructure package. So we will be sending an email in the morning with the number to call, what to say, and how to share the word with friends. But tomorrow and continuing for the next few weeks as well throughout the course of these infrastructure negotiations, we are going to be driving calls into a few key offices who have a lot of power over the water section of the infrastructure bill. So these folks you can see on the slide, it is Senator Carper from Delaware, who is the chairman of the Environment and Public Works Committee. He will be a really key player, as well as Senator Tammy Duckworth from Illinois, who is the subcommittee chair for fisheries, water, and wildlife, as well as in, on the and then on the House side, um, we have Representative Frank Pallone from New Jersey's 6th Congressional District, who is the chair of the Energy and Commerce Committee. 
and uh, Representative Peter DeFazio from Oregon's fourth district, who is the chair of the Transportation and Infrastructure Committee. Um, so you can see those folks on the screen there, but if you can um, give your time to call supporters and voters in those off in those districts to try to get them to call these offices um, anytime in the next few weeks when it's convenient for you, please sign up using the link that Cassandra just put in the chat. We will follow up with instructions on how to make these calls from home. Um, all you need is a computer or a tablet and your phone. Um, and we will be hosting a quick training on how to make these calls next week. Um, so you can again, sign up using the link that we are dropping in the chat and we will be in touch on you know, how to exactly make those calls, but they will be you know, pretty easy to make and will make a really huge impact and could really have a huge influence over what the water pieces look like in this infrastructure package. And then uh, the second way to support this campaign is, you know, through supporting our work um, financially. So the longer we delay action, the worse our water crisis will become. And we need to fight hard to ensure access to water for all. Food and Water Action never takes corporate funding, so our campaigns are completely powered by generous people like you. Um, a small monthly contribution will help us cover the costs of our tools that we use to empower people to call their representatives and cover some of the staff time spent on this campaign as well. Um, and as I mentioned earlier in the call, thanks to a few generous donors right now, all monthly contributions will be matched throughout the end of the year, so you can double your impact. Um, so if you are able, please click the link in the chat to become a monthly partner with Food and Water Action, or um, you can increase a current monthly gift and have it matched through the end of the year as well. Um, so that link is in the chat and you can click that to support this urgent campaign. Um, and thank you all so much for your dedication and support for your time and for your financial support as well. If you have joined by phone and missed the links in the chat, do not worry. We will be following up in an email to everyone who RSVP that will include those links as well as the recording. Um, so now we are going to have some time to answer your questions. Uh, we have received a lot of great questions already, so glad to see everyone's enthusiasm and curiosity. But if you have any questions um, for us, please feel free to use the Q&A box at the bottom of the Zoom screen and we will get to as many as we can. Um, so I will bring up the first question that I see here is uh, Beatrice and Vivian both asked, how can we stop Wall Street from trying to buy water rights that belong to farmers and the people? Um, what are you going to do with the Wall Street trading futures like oil and gold? And they shared, if we do not do anything at one point or another, people will own water and request payment for it. This is a human rights issue and Congress must include water as a human right. Completely agree. Um, Mary, do you have an answer for that one? Sure, this is a great question. So thank you, Beatrice and Vivian, for the question. Um, some of the folks on the call may not have heard, but last year in December, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange launched the world's first water futures market. This is deeply disturbing for people who view water as a common resource, a public good that should be managed for the public benefit. Right now, um, Wall Street speculators are treating water like a plaything. Um, this is very concerning for us. So we have pulled together a work group with our board chair, Maud Barlow, and we are working on solutions to try to stop this. We want to stop the practice and completely ban the idea of trading water futures on the market. It's deeply disturbing to us I'm, as, as to you. And so we are working on that. And later this year, we will be releasing a, um, a fact sheet about what this means. What is water financialization? What are water rights? And what can we do to stop it? So please stay tuned to, um, for more on that. Amazing, thank you so much, Mary. I think we have another question for you. Um, so how is the Water Act uh, differ, or different from the Clean Water Act? Great question. So the Clean Water Act was passed by Congress um, in the 70s, right? You might have seen rivers on fire because we weren't regulating our um, effluent, our discharges into the waterway. So they passed the Clean Water Act to set up standards. And when the Clean Water Act was passed, Congress did an amazing thing. They set up a grant program. 
So you might have seen that back in the 70s. That's when federal funding and support for our water systems peaked. And that's because that construction grants program to, as part of the Clean Water Act that funded wastewater systems across our country. And so that <laughs> federal funding, the grant program was phased out by President Reagan um, in the 80s. Um, and since then, the federal it was replaced with a loan program, a revolving loan program. And since then, funding has fallen, fallen. There was an uptick with the Obama stimulus, and then it's been pretty steady um, in the past couple of years. So the Water Act would um, restore that federal funding that we saw when the Clean Water Act passed, when the Congress um, passed that a landmark legislation to say that we're going to clean up our waterways. We're going to restore the funding so that our communities can actually do that. Um, so that would, that's what the Water Act is. Um, it would fund both the Clean Water um, State Revolving Fund program created through the Clean Water Act, as well as the Safe Drinking Water State Revolving Fund program through the Safe Drinking Water Act. So the Clean Water Act is um, about regulating our wastewater and our stormwater, and the Safe Drinking Water Act is about setting regulations on our drinking water. And we're going to fund both programs, both on loan programs, turn half of that funding back into grants so that our communities can actually make the improvements that need to happen without overburdening households. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mary. Um, a similar question. How is the Water Act uh, different from the proposed infrastructure package that um, they've been debating in the Senate this week? Sure. So. The Water Act at the core, the heart of it is a trust fund. So this is about removing water funding from that annual appropriations battle. Every year we go into Congress and we say, we need to fund these programs. We need to fund our water systems. So the Water Act will make sure that our federal um, dollars for our water systems is guaranteed. We don't have to go into the Congress every year. We don't have to have these battles. What passed um, out of committee this week in the Senate is a bill to um, reauthorize some loan programs. The funding is a lot less than what we're proposing. And it's an authorization. It's not an appropriation. So <laughs> it's just saying that Congress can appropriate up to, I think it's $4 billion a year for these um, drinking water and wastewater programs. What we want to do is say we want $35 billion each and every year. And we want it guaranteed without having to battle um, at the budget table <laughs> in Congress. because. All too often, water is one of the first things on the chopping block, and we need to make sure that funding for our water systems is guaranteed, and it's guaranteed at the level that we need to be funding it at. Amazing. Um, thank you so much. I see a question here um, that I can go ahead and answer. So someone asked, how would our donations be used? Um, and so love to share that uh, all of your donations go towards our research and policy analysis. As you can see, um, Mary is an incredible expert and it goes towards you know making sure we can support um, research and analysis and uh, making sure we're keeping up to date on all of the things coming out of Congress. Um, it also goes to our outreach tools for calls and texts and emails so that we can mobilize people in their communities to speak out on these issues. And then of course it goes to other materials and support for events like this. And um, as I mentioned earlier, Food and Water Action never takes corporate funding. So our campaigns are only possible with support of generous people like you. So thank you so much um, for considering supporting our work. Um, all right, let's, another question. Um, let's see, there are so many good ones here. Uh, how, why is the funding level for the Water Act $35 billion a year? Um, how do we get to that number, Mary? That's a great question. Um, so we're relying on EPA. Um, EPA does need surveys every four years, looking surveying our water and our sewer systems. And so we're looking at the EPA, what the EPA is telling us that our water and sewer systems need to spend. They need to spend this just to comply with existing federal standards. So we're restoring that federal government commitment so that our water and our sewer systems can really um, meet that need that EPA has identified. Amazing, thank you so much. Um, another question from Mary B um, asked, how does the Water Act address or support water to individual households on reservations such as the Navajo Nation? Great question. So the Water Act does two things. Um, 
it will dramatically increase funding for indigenous community water systems to expand water lines out to households that are underserved or unserved. And it would also provide grants to households on household wells to update and improve their own individual household well. Um, it would also fund and support households with septic systems to update and replace their own septic systems. Thank you. Amazing. Um, another one is how does, oh, from Ann M asked, uh, how does this affect areas that are not connected to the public water systems in more urban areas, such as those on septic and water wells only? Great question. So it was a key idea when we um, were working with um, Representative Conyers and designing the bill to make sure that it um, helps both them cities and our localities, as well as rural households, um, address their water needs. So it does provide that grant program that would fund update, testing and updating household drinking water wells, especially if you have PFAS, you, uh, there's another grant program available to test and update your drinking water well to address and to solve treatment if it's contaminated or to connect to a community water system if treatment is not working. Um, it also provides funding for um, septic systems. This is a huge need, particularly in the South, um, well, across the country, Ohio and the South, septic systems are failing, they're aging and households are, it's the burden of updating and replacing household wells and septic systems is left up to the individual household. And that can leave many people in rural America left out and left behind without access to water and sanitation. So the Water Act does create a grant program. It does fully fund that grant program for drinking water wells and septic systems. Great, thank you so much. Um, a couple of questions about privatization here. Um, is there a central site that citizens can go to figure out whether their water is publicly run or managed by a private corporation? And um, how would the Water Act prevent privatization of water systems in the US? Great questions. So unfortunately, um, there's no good database of privatization contracts in the US. We do maintain an internal database. So if you are concerned about your own water system, please do reach out to us and we can help you figure that out. Um, there is an EPA, Safe Drinking Water Information System. They have some data about the ownership of your utility, but it's not user-friendly. It can be very difficult to find out who controls your water system. The good news is that 90% of people in the U.S. who are on a community water system get their water from a publicly owned system. About 6% of water systems are operated by private companies like Veolia and Suez. Um, but most people, get their water from their local government or their town um, and not these private operators. But that's the good news. But there are people who these private operators are being really aggressive, particularly um, for small and mid-sized communities. They're being super aggressive um, with the fallout of the pandemic. A lot of these small cities are in fiscal distress right now. They're really struggling and privatizers are going after them really hard being like, give us your water system and we'll give you this large upfront lump sum of money. It can sound really enticing for a struggling city, but this money is not free. It's super expensive. It's gonna be, it's a huge expensive loan that households are gonna have to repay through hikes on their water rates. And water rates are really regressive. They disproportionately burden low-income households. So by using water assets as a way to finance or, or fund local government, it's a really regressive way to do that. Um, it's not transparent. And it's in many cases permanent. If you sell off your water system, it's really hard to get it back. The Water Act does provide funding though to really help communities on Long Island right now. There's a really great campaign for public control from American water. Um, so the Water Act and in Monterey, California, there's a really great public campaign from Public Water Now to um, support buying their water system from American Water. The Water Act would open up the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund program so that these communities can use federal dollars to support their effort to secure that public ownership and public control and local control of their water systems. It would also provide funding to exit privatization contracts. Um, sometimes these contracts have really large penalties if a city wants to exit early. They might see rate hikes or poor service, but really struggle to exit the contract early. So the Water Act would provide support for these cities so that they can actually get out of bad deals. The Water Act also, by making sure our water systems are fully funded, 
removes an incentive for local governments who want to wash their hands of needing to make these improvements. Sometimes a local government officials, especially mayors on, you know, short campaign cycles, will see a, like shifting the burden and the responsibility of updating a water system to a private company as an appealing and enticing solution for them for the short term. It's a very short term idea, um, myopic. Um, so the Water Act, by funding our water systems, would remove that incentive. They don't need to worry about updating or funding or finding the financing for improving water systems. So it, it, in that way, by supporting our water systems, we can make sure that every community can retain local control and retain local control and make sure that their water is safe and accessible and affordable for their residents. Amazing. Um, thank you so much. The next question, there are so many good questions coming in here. Y'all, if you have any more, feel free to drop them in the Q&A. Um, box, but there are certainly plenty to get to. The next one is, uh, once the Water Act is passed, how would states divide up the $35 billion? And then how would it be enforced within each state? Great question. So we are not changing the allocation formula. EPA for the, has different allocation formula about how they distribute existing federal dollars to the state revolving fund program. So we're not changing that formula. The clean water one um, and the drinking water one, I think are based on the needs assessment. So they distribute it based on the needs, those needs surveys, and then they allocate money that way. So we're not touching that. Um, so the funding will go proportionally to each state based on the existing formula. We're, we're not changing that program. We're just fully funding the program. So that's a great question. And how would it be enforced? Um, each state is responsible for their own um, allocation of those funding. So the state administers the funding. So each state has a project priority list that they compile each and every year where they rank projects. Most years there's so many, like dozens or hundreds of projects that just are left unfunded because there's not enough funding available. So by fully funding that program, more of those projects on the priority list will get funded. And so the enforcement mechanism is at the state level. Um, so I hope that answers your question. If not, please do follow up um, and I can offer more clarity. Amazing. Thank you so much, Mary. I am going to, there's a question that came in that um, I can answer. So I'll go ahead and give you a break. Um, so someone asked, I live in one of the states mentioned as a priority. Um, what can I do to help convince my senator to support the Water Act? So this is a great question. Um, and we will be, as we mentioned, organizing over the next few weeks to ensure that these top um, decision makers will be putting on um, water justice provisions in the infrastructure package. Um, the best thing that you can do is help mobilize folks in your state, in your community, in your congressional district um, to reach out to your elected official and tell them that they should prioritize water justice and the water act in the infrastructure bill um, if you you know you live in illinois and your senators tammy duckworth you can get your church folks involved in your church to contact you can get your community association to reach out you can get your friends and family and neighbors uh, you can post on next door and social media um, just bringing more people into this fight and um uplifting as many voices as possible and really letting them know that this is a priority will be so important. Um, so you can support this and, and make more of an impact by spreading the word with your friends and neighbors. Um, and you can also always reach out to us. We would love if you are interested in getting groups in your neighborhood or in your community to support the Water Act or having a meeting with your elected official or whatever it is, definitely reach out. Um, Thomas has put the act at FW Action um, email in the chat so you can reach out there and we will get back to you and happy to set up a time to talk one-on-one um, -on -one if you want to strategize how we can win this thing. Um, so the next question that I see here is Margaret asked, um, what is the progress so far with Flint, Michigan? Great question, Margaret. So Flint, Michigan um, is still in a water crisis, right? People do not trust their water in Flint. Um, there's been a lot of work um, to replace the lead service lines. They've all been replaced, but there's still an ongoing issue with affordability. Uh, Flint has promised not to 
um, shut off people's water during the crisis. The state has a water shut off um, moratorium in place right now, but people are really concerned still about their water. Um, and Flint is still in a distressed city that needs a lot of support to make sure that water is safe and accessible for households in Flint. So great question. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Um, the next question is, would the Water Act address um, water shutoffs? And does it have provisions to address the water debt crisis? Great question. So the Water Act doesn't directly suspend water shutoffs. The Water Act is about funding infrastructure improvements, which would take the burden off of our cities and our towns and our water systems from raising rates to pay for improvements. So in a roundabout way would address the water shutoff crisis by making water service more affordable for households. But it does not impose a nationwide moratorium on water shutoffs. That's why we are continuing to call on President Biden to take action and to direct the CDC to issue a nationwide water shutoff moratorium for the remainder of the pandemic and a year afterwards so people can get back on their feet. We also are supporting bills like the Emergency Water is a Human Right Act in Congress by Representative Tlaib and Dingle and Senator Merkley, which would provide $1.5 billion as a low income water assistance um, fund that is tied to a suspension on water and power shutoffs. There are efforts that we're supporting in Congress right now too, to cancel water debt, to have the federal government step up and provide that relief to our utilities and ultimately to our households to make sure that water shutoffs are suspended and that people can get out of this pandemic without being crushed under the weight of all the debt they've accrued. So thank you, great questions. Thank you so much. Um, and I can take this last question. So someone put in the chat or in the Q&A box, I don't have time to volunteer what's the best way to support this campaign. Um, this is a great question. Like I mentioned earlier, a small monthly donation is one of the best ways to support our work. Um, and all new monthly donations made during this call will be matched through the end of the year. Even five or $10 a month goes a really long way to pay for our outreach tools and organizing events like this one. Um, so we thank you so much for your support. And again, the link to sign up is in the chat. Um, and thank you all for your wonderful and thoughtful questions. If we did not answer anything and you'd like to follow up again, please feel free to email us at the act at fwaction.org email that is in the chat. Um, but I, we hope that you've learned a lot this evening and feel motivated to join us to fight to ensure that everyone has access to water by passing the Water Act in the infrastructure package. Um, and before we go, I would not be an organizer if I did not ask you one last time to join us in this fight, however you can. Um, so tomorrow we are having a call-in day to show the strong support for the Water Act. So you can join us by calling your elected officials and spreading the word with your networks. You will get an email from us with all of the details. Um, we can share some social media posts you can put up um, and get you set up to help make a, a huge impact. And if you'd like to take it a step further, with your help, we can put even more pressure on some of those key representatives that we mentioned earlier to push for real water justice solutions by including the Water Act in the infrastructure package. Um, so you can sign up using the link in the chat to make calls to voters and food and water action members in key legislative districts and states on your own time in the next few weeks. Super flexible, we'll have trainings and support, um, but you can you know, make a few calls whenever you have time and it really will make a huge impact. Um, hearing from constituents is one of the best ways to help influence our elected officials. And you can make those calls from your bed, your couch, your backyard um, to do the, you know, to help ensure that Congress does the right thing to guarantee safe, affordable, clean public water for all. Um, again, and if you are able, a financial contribution will also go a long way to support this work. As I mentioned earlier, all of the monthly contributions will be matched through the end of this year, thanks to a pool of our generous donors. So if you are able, you can use the link in the chat to sign up as a monthly donor to Food and Water Action. Um, so that concludes our town hall the Water Act, a solution for our country's growing water crisis. 
Again, thank you so much for joining. If you have any lingering thoughts or questions, please feel free to reach out to us at act at fwaction.org. Again, that's ACT at F-W-A-C-T-I-O-N dot O-R-G. Um, I hope that you all stay healthy and well and hope you have a great night. Thank you so much for joining us.